Hi everyone, I'm Tanaz from foreverconscious.com and this is your monthly cosmic forecast for August 2021. If you are a regular, you will know that usually I do weekly forecasts, but I'm switching to this monthly format as I am expecting a little girl at the start of October. So I'm just trying to limit my workload a little bit and I'll just be doing monthly forecasts um, probably until the new year. So. I know a lot of you have messaged me and said that you much, much prefer the weekly forecasts. Um, I hope you're still able to get some benefit out of these monthly forecasts. And I really encourage you to come back and keep watching the video throughout the month. It's a lot to take in. Um, <clears throat> it's a lot of information. So I think it really helps if you, you know, either watch it all the way through and then come back or even just watch it in little snippets and then come back throughout the month. And I will put the timestamps below in the description box um, so you can then fast forward ahead to like, okay, what's happening with the full moon? What's happening with this and that? So you don't have to sort through the whole video each and every time. So check out those timestamps, which I'll put below, which hopefully will help you navigate this video a little bit easier. <clears throat> Excuse me. October is a huge big month. So if you want a notepad and pen to write stuff down, I really recommend it. This I really feel like October is going to be one of those pivotal uh, peak months of the year. There is just so much going on. There's a lot as you will see and there are just a lot of uh, cosmic shifts happening. So when I look at the energy for a month, I will look at to see what kind of shifts are taking place, what kind of changes are taking place. And there is just so many happening all through the month of October. And then what's kind of interesting about October is that it leads us in to eclipse season. We don't have the eclipses until November. They don't start until November, but will feel that buildup of energy and eclipses are always highly potent transformation points. They, they represent portals, openings where we can take quantum jumps, quantum leaps into new levels of consciousness. So very often eclipses bring us events that will inspire us to shift our consciousness and take that big leap forward into a new chapter, into a new level of our sort of evolution on a spiritual level. So big energies brewing and big cosmic shifts taking place all through this month. In fact, <clears throat> one of the main sort of cosmic shifts is at the start of October, we have six planets in retrograde. So retrograde kind of implies that the energy is moving in a, in a slower, um, more kind of reflective mode, right? So at the start of October, we have six planets moving with this energetic vibration. By the end of the month, we only have two. So that is a big energy shift. Bang, 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 kind of one after the other. These retrograde planets, which sort of have this slower, more kind of reflective, more sort of subtle, intuitive vibration and now all moving out of retrograde, they're moving in a forward um, pattern and that will amplify, will shift, will change the energy and it, they kind of all happen back to back as I'll go through throughout the forecast. So there's big energy shifts. We also have a really potent full moon coming up in the sort of towards the end of the month on the 20th. There's an Aries full moon and that is a big full moon, a lots of energy around that. I think that's probably going to be one of the most intense full moons um, that we'll have this year. I know we have an eclipse in November, but this full moon just feels like it's got a lot packed behind it. So let's start at the beginning of the month. I'll go through kind of week by week, to sort of keep in the similar format. I have some notes behind me. So if you notice my eyeline, it's just my notes on my monitor behind uh, this camera. <clears throat> okay. So in the first week of October, we are leading up to the Libra new moon. The Libra new moon happens on October 6th. And this is actually, I think the energy around this feels very <clears throat> harmonious. It activates, um, and so at the time of this new moon, there is an activation of um, several planets in the sign of Libra. We have the sun, we have the moon, 
Mercury and Mars all in the sign of Libra. <clears throat> Excuse me. So this is known as a stellium. When we get this lineup of all these planets in one particular sign of the zodiac, it's known as a stellium. So this is some strong, concentrated Libra energy. So this new moon is really going to have a Libra feel to it. So what can we expect? We can expect, or how can we use this energy is maybe a better way to look at it. We can use this energy to find balance balance in our lives, balance between our work life and our home life, balance between, you know, surrendering and going with the flow and then also putting, you know, pen to paper, taking action, finding that balance as well, finding the balance between giving and receiving of our energy, the balance of that in our lives. This new moon is all about finding and creating balance. And that's because the Libra themes are so, so strong. Libra is also about relationships and kind of it rules over the other people in our lives, how we interact with the other. And so this might be a focus for you at the time of this new moon. You might be reflecting on, thinking on how you relate and interact with those around you and maybe where you need to set boundaries or where your boundaries have been too high and uncompromising, that might come up for you as well. And I think it's worthwhile remembering that everyone that comes into our lives can be a teacher, especially those, um, you know, those beautiful relationships, but also those extremely challenging relationships. So looking at it from that viewpoint and knowing that Libra is about how we relate to the other, try and think about how um, these people, these, especially these challenging people, because very often we are quick to sort of dismiss the challenging people that come um, on our path. What are they revealing about us? What are, what are they teaching us? Maybe they're teaching us how to love ourselves more, how to say no more, how to respect our boundaries more. Or maybe there's something deeper. Maybe this person is triggering a wound or something that we need to look at inside of ourselves. So that might all be things that come up under this Libra new moon, which is on October 6th. Also on October 6th, Pluto, which has been retrograde since I think it was April 26th, will shift direct. So uh, both of these things are happening on the same day, the Libra new moon and then Pluto moving direct. Pluto is a very subtle energy. So when it shifts from retrograde and stations direct, it is subtle. It is a subtle vibration that we feel. But because it's happening at the same time as the new moon, it kind of creates this um, feeling of new beginnings or whatever deaths have occurred in our lives. So deaths as in like things that have fallen away, especially since April, if you think about what sort of transformations and rebirths that you might have been moving through, you may find that this Pluto shifting direct energy helps you to plant new seeds. And again, that's sort of highlighted because the new moon is sort of also a time to plant new seeds. So there's this sort of amplification of energy where we're being encouraged to take that burnt soil. So the reason that I'm talking about um, death and rebirth and all that is because Pluto is the planet of death and rebirth. And whatever deaths we have experienced from April up until this point, as Pluto shifts direct, it's a time to plant new seeds. The soil is fertile. The soil is ready. You know, we've waited long enough. We've gone through that death experience and now we're ready. The field is open for us to plant new seeds, to think about what we want to nurture and bring in. And the new moon is just adding another layer of support to that. So that is sort of the energy that we'll be feeling, especially in the first week of the month, we'll be feeling that need to balance. In fact, it's a great way to use this energy to think about how you can create balance. And then you might also find yourself naturally reflecting on the deaths that have occurred in your life, especially since April or even beyond <clears throat> the start of the year. What has fallen away? What have you worked to release from your life on a deeper level? 
And whatever the answer is to that, you'll find that the soil is now fertile and ready for you to plant new seeds and to replace those things that you have moved away with things that are more aligned and things that are more beneficial to your growth and level of consciousness. So Pluto is a very deep planet. It works on very subtle, intuitive levels. So we may also find as Pluto shifts direct on October 6th, that our intuition is heightened, that our deeper intuitive senses are a little bit more tingly on that day and that we're really being encouraged to think about, okay, what have I cleared from my life? Where is this death process taking place? And now what can I rebirth? What can I bring to this, um, you know, new fertile soil that is waiting for me? Because following any kind of death, we're always, there's always a boost of creative energy, a boost of creative force energy that eventually arises and we can take that and create something new with it. And that's very much what the focus is for that first week of October. Also, on the first week of October, on October 7th, we have the sun aligning with Mars. So Mars is the planet of action and it rules over our energy levels, our feelings of motivation, our feelings of stamina, especially our physical stamina. Mars can also rule over our heated emotions, you know, our more passionate, fiery, intense emotions. And when sun, um, sorry, when uh, Mars aligns with the sun, we get an amplification of this energy. Now, I mentioned this happens on October 7th, kind of in that first week of the month. However, it's likely that we'll feel this energy building probably from the end of September. You might have already been feeling it and it will run pretty much all the way through uh, to the end of October. So this is a really strong Mars month. So Mars, when we think of Mars, we think of passion, energy, excitement, um, pushing past our fears, uh, real, you know, go-getting masculine type energy. And that's really on offer to us all through the month. So this is kind of nice, right? This is beautiful. We can use this to get motivated, to push past some fears, to, you know, take those leaps. Mars is brave and bold. Think of it like the warrior. You know, how can you put on your warrior armor, your warrior suit, and just, you know, get what needs to get done. Feel that motivation. Know that you can. Know that you're strong. That energy is is there. It's on offer to us. But there are a couple little things that I want you to pay attention to. Mars rules over our energy levels. And when it is very strong, when it's traveling along with the sun, as it will be doing for a lot of this month, peaking on that October 7th date, we can get burnt out. So we can, you know, push too hard. We can push too strong. And especially if that's a pattern that we have been doing, uh, we may find that this Mars energy leads us to complete burnout, needing to rest. Mars can also sometimes bring up, you know, accidents, little mishaps, little missteps. And if we're rushing, we're not paying attention, we're not sort of in our state of alignment, you know, something, I, I don't want to put it out there that you're going to have an accident. That's not what I'm saying at all. But you just have to be mindful of how you are moving, how you are working with your energy, because if you need to slow down, the universe will find ways to slow you down. So just be mindful of that. Mars can also trigger those heightened, more passionate emotions. So this might be great if you're a passionate person and you, you rely on your passions to help fuel your creative energies and your you know, creative projects or maybe things around the house. But if you also are prone to anger or frustration or tension or any of that is bubbling in your life for whatever reason, this Mars energy can activate that. It can kind of create that volcanic eruption type energy. So that's also something to be mindful of. If there is something bubbling and brewing, it is best to deal with it, work with it. Do not hide from your anger and frustration and tension. These emotions are not negative. We need to experience all types of emotions 
okay we just we obviously don't want to linger and hold on to anger and resentment because that's not good it doesn't feel good for anybody but we don't want to shy away from those emotions either and pretend that they don't exist we want to lean into them so don't be afraid to lean into those emotions to explore them to look at what might be hiding underneath them Usually with things like anger, there is something else happening below the surface that if we can give some awareness to, we can help clear that anger. So Mars energy can kind of manifest in, you know, in many different ways. And this is all just things to be aware of. It will peak on October 7th. But like I said, you're likely to be feeling this for a couple of weeks before and definitely a couple of weeks after. On October 9th, we have Mercury, which is currently in retrograde. So Mercury retrograde gets a little bit of a bad reputation, but just keep in mind that another way to look at it, a lot of people kind of blame Mercury retrograde for communication delays and breakdowns and um, you know all sorts of missteps and miscommunications. And yes, while all of that can be a manifestation of Mercury retrograde, it is also a time where our subconscious and our deeper thought processes are easier to access. If you think of it like this, Mercury is the messenger. And when it's traveling retrograde, it becomes the messenger for our subconscious. So if you do encounter delays, mishaps, try to think about it from a bigger picture perspective. Your laptop breaks down. All right, okay, you know, I'll get it fixed. But what message is Mercury trying to communicate with me? Now, of course, sometimes, you know, technology just breaks down, cars break down, we experience delays. You know, we don't have to dig deep into every little thing that we encounter. But if there's something major, some sort of misfiring, miscommunication, contract issues, communication issues, this is your opportunity to look at it. And what happens on October uh, 9th is that the Sun and Mercury, which is currently retrograde, meet a line. And this is kind of a pivotal point in the Mercury retrograde cycle. It's a point of illumination. It's a point where we might start to understand some of these deeper, more subconscious messages that Mercury is trying to communicate with us. It can actually be a point of clarity, mental clarity as well. So if things have felt foggy, if you have been feeling that kind of, you know, um, foggy, you know, Mercury is the messenger, but it also rules over our minds. So if, you know, thoughts haven't been clear, you haven't been able to make a clear cut decision, you may actually find, even though Mercury is still in retrograde, you may actually find that this uh, Sun and Mercury alignment that happens on this day brings some illumination. So look for that, feel into that, know that that day is there for you to illuminate your deeper, more subconscious thought processes. And then on October 10th, so the next day, we have Saturn moving direct. So I kind of mentioned through all through October, we have this sort of lineup of planets shifting in their energy. And then we had Pluto. And now we have Saturn on the 10th moving out of retrograde, stationing direct. It's happening on 10-10, October 10th. And Saturn is the planet of responsibility and growth and lessons. And you can think of it when it turns direct, almost like a graduation point. You've graduated from a chapter of lessons that you have been working on that Saturn has been trying to teach you. Uh, I know astrologers sometimes like to think of Saturn as a strict teacher. You know, if you do the work and you do the lessons, even though it's hard, you'll learn a lot, you'll grow a lot, you'll excel a lot. And so as Saturn moves direct, it sort of represents this graduation point where whatever lessons you've been working on, you've graduated and now you're ready to kind of move on to the next chapter. So if you want to dive a little bit deeper into that and think about, okay, what, you know, lessons have I been graduating from? Saturn has been retrograde since May 23. So since that time, we have all been working to really finesse the lessons and the growth that we have been undergoing since December of last year. 
So kind of from this time frame of December to May, whatever sort of work we have been doing in that time, this is what we've been finessing from May to now in October, and now we're ready to move on. I also just want to add that I have, this is just something that I have noticed, and I've heard other astrologers talk about it too, so I'm not the only one. I have just noticed that whenever Saturn makes a big shift in the sky, uh, we it, it seems to really be connected to the pandemic. I know I've said that before, but this is just something that I have seen. <clears throat> and so I think, or I'm just going to put out there that with this Saturn moving direct, we may notice more information or more insights coming up around the pandemic. That's just something I've noticed. So I would imagine if I'm following this pattern correctly, that as Saturn turns direct on October 10th, around this date, around this time, we should be getting some new insights or information <clears throat> or progression uh, to this, you know, global pandemic that we're all kind of working through. And then we move on kind of into the third sort of week of October. On the 17th, we have Jupiter turning direct. So now we have, we had Saturn, we had Pluto first, we had Saturn, and now on the 17th, Jupiter will turn direct. So Jupiter has also been retrograde for the last uh, few months. And as it goes direct, it's kind of an opportunity to think about what beliefs we have shared and upgraded. What was true for you six months ago that is now no longer true? What is a truth or a belief that you have upgraded or, uh, you know, feel more passionate about or have new insights? I used to believe this, but now I know this, you know, that is kind of the energy that we can lean into as Jupiter turns direct. So now we have a few more planets moving direct in our cosmic skies. We're going to feel a momentum, a push forward. If you have been feeling like you have uh, been a little, things have been a little bit slow, or you've had to kind of revisit the past, you may find that things are now pushing forward a little bit more with now more planets moving in what we'd call this direct forward motion. We're getting way more cosmic energy moving forward rather than in a reflective state. And then this trend continues. So Jupiter goes direct on the 17th. And then on the 18th, Mercury goes direct too. So Jupiter, Saturn, and Pluto, when they shift direct, their energy is pretty subtle. Mercury is a little bit louder in its energy imprint when it shifts retrograde or direct. So this Mercury moving out of retrograde, stationing direct on October 18th, will likely feel that on the surface level a little bit more. We may find clarity. We may find that our mind is a little bit clearer. We may start receiving new insights and messages about what we need to do to move forward. So all of that will take a little bit of time. Mercury doesn't really get back to its former strength and speed until November 2nd, but we'll feel, excuse me, we'll feel that energy shifting forward and we'll feel that clarity of mind a little bit more sort of strongly. Um, so yeah, that's on the 17th and 18th, more forward moving energy. And that kind of leads us up to the Aries full moon, which happens on October 20th. And as I mentioned at the start of this video, this Aries full moon is a punchy one. It's a powerful one. It's uh, intense. The energy around it is very intense. So Aries is kind of an intense sign anyway. It's passionate. It's driven. It's ruled by Mars. So all those Mars qualities that I mentioned earlier kind of all attacked onto the energy of Aries. Aries is the first sign of the zodiac. So it's the leader. It's the pioneer. It is that sort of forward um, energy, that energy of real new beginnings, fresh starts, all of that is connected and tied in to Aries energy. And on Aries full moon, we tend to feel that. Also, what's happening on this full moon that makes it so potent is what's called a T-square. 
So a T-square is just a configuration in, you know, in a T-shape, and it involves the Moon, Mars, and Pluto. And these are all very fiery, intense planets as well. So it's just this sort of strong, um, potent combination of energy as these planets come into this T-square configuration at the time of the full moon. Now, T-squares, they're not that rare. They do happen. They indicate tension. They indicate a building of tension that causes a reaction. It causes us to react. Now, they can be harsh and they can be challenging, but I really want you to think of it this way. Sometimes we need some tension in order to be pushed, in order to move, in order to get things done. If everything was flowing, if everything was easy, it would be nice, it would be wonderful, but, you know, sometimes we need that tension. Sometimes we need that build of energy to really push us in the right direction, to kind of force our hand in a direction that, you know, we probably need to go in, but we're, for whatever reason, not confident to take that step. So while it can create tension and can be a heightened, fiery, potent, restless type energy, I do think that there is this benefit in that it's pushing us where we need to be. It's guiding us where we need to go. So the couple of things that we might experience on this full moon is definitely heightened emotions. If you've had those tensions bubbling beneath the surface, you may find that this full moon feels like an uh, you know, imploding point or a peak point or a release point. And, you know, as uncomfortable as that is, it may just inspire things to change. It may just inspire you to finally say, enough's enough. I need to shift this. I need to change this. Or the eruption happens and it's like, okay, it's done now. How do we rebuild? How do we move forward from this point? Whatever needs to come up and out has come up and out and it's better out than in, right? So all of that energy is kind of encapsulated around the time of this full moon. So I want you to be gentle with yourself. I also want you to try and be gentle with others. You have the awareness that this is bringing up heightened energy to inspire action. Okay, not everyone has awareness around that. They don't know. So try to be gentle with yourself and gentle with other people because you might find that people are a little more irritable, tensions are running a little bit more high. You know, that energy is definitely happening around this time. On a global level, we very well may see some sort of tension erupting, whether that's in the form of protests or people speaking out. It feels like kind of like I want to do this, you know, like the volcano you know, rising up and things spilling out, you know, people have had enough, that kind of energy seems to be attached to this full moon. There's a release point that's happening at this full moon and it feels very, very charged. So remember that there are healthy ways for you to use this energy. Whenever we have strong Mars or Aries energy, it's we can um, express that through our physical bodies. So that could be through exercise, through dancing, through, uh, you know, doing a body scan, which is where you will do some sort of meditation where you'll just imagine every part of your being slowly and softening, uh, softening and relaxing. Working with your physical body and your physical space is a really good way to channel some of this Aries, Mars type energy that will have very, very strong under this full moon. As always, I have a ritual for you as well. Just check about a week before this full moon. It will be up on the site um, and you can work with that Aries full moon ritual to also help, you know, integrate and filter some of these harsher energies or I shouldn't say harsh, this is a potent, powerful energies. Remember that Mars and Aries is like our inner warrior. We are strong. It wants us to know that we have the strength. So whatever comes up for you, whatever is going on, 
know that you are strong enough to move through it. Know you are strong enough and powerful enough to be able to hold space while that chaos, while that tension, while that release is happening around you. You have the strength. You have the power. You are the warrior in this moment. And again, that Aries energy is about leadership, pioneering, new beginnings. So how can you embrace that as well? How can you take whatever's happening around you at the time of this full moon and think of it as a new opportunity, a new chapter, a new way of doing things differently, of being the leader of your own life in a new and better way? So there is definitely heightened energy and on a full moon we can tend to feel a little more emotional, a little more sensitive, a little more volatile, you know, honor that, know that that's there, but then also know that any tension that you're feeling can be channeled through your physical body, through movement, and then through inspiring action, taking steps forward actually doing something. It's not a passive energy. This is a very active energy. So think about how you want to show up in the situation that you might find yourself in. Think about how your higher self would show up and then move from that direction. When, we're, when we feel this inspiration to act, we also want to look and see, am I, where, am I being led by my ego? by my fears or by love? And that's another question you can kind of pose to yourself under this full moon. Where is my motivation coming from? These actions that I want to take, that I feel inspired to take, where are they coming from? And just trying to put some conscious awareness behind them because like I said, emotions will be heightened and sometimes when our emotions are heightened, it can be hard to see clearly. It can be hard to sort of see that bigger picture, that path forward. So keep that in mind. That is that full moon, which we will definitely feel for about a week before and about a week after. It is charged, but it offers some beauty as well. And then at the sort of the last week or so of the month, things quieten. We are heading towards eclipses, but there's a little bit of a quieter breeze blowing through the cosmic skies helping us to integrate, helping us to kind of take in and digest all of the big energy shifts that have happened. As we get to the end of the month, we of course on October 31st have uh, Halloween. October 31st brings Halloween, which gets its roots from the pagan festival of Samhain. And Samhain is kind of the observed, it's not exactly, but around that last couple of, uh, last week of October, first weeks of November, we're at that um, cross, it's a, known as a cross quarter day or a cross quarter celebration, where we're sort of reaching that halfway point between that September equinox and the upcoming December solstice. So it's kind of like we're, you know, moving through another trance formation point, another sort of energy shift point. Also, what's really interesting, it's not just Samhain, there are many uh, celebrations that happen around the end of October, start of November, that celebrate death and rebirth. And this is something we can see across many different cultures around the world. And I can't help feeling that part of this is due to the rising of the Pleiades. The Pleiades are a star system, a star cluster that rise up to their highest point in the night sky uh, for, for you know the whole world. It, the date will change based on where you're located. It'll either kind of be around the end of October to the midpoint of November. It'll kind of depend where you're located, but the Pleiades will move high into the sky. And when this happened, our ancestors looked to the Pleiades as the uh, star system or the star cluster uh, of death and rebirth, of honoring the deaths that we have moved through, of honoring our loved ones past, of honoring the things that have to fall away for the new to occur. So if you're experiencing autumn, you might really be feeling that death motif, you know, happening in your life where things are falling away. There's that transition. If you're experiencing spring in the Southern hemisphere, you know, you might be feeling that rebirth, that new opportunities are flowing in. So 
the rising of the Pleiades is a time to really acknowledge and honor the moments of death and rebirth and to celebrate our loved ones past as well and I know Halloween is kind of a commercial holiday but I do think we can kind of you know return let it return to its original roots a little bit by using it to acknowledge our ancestors the things that we have let go of the deaths that we have experienced our loved ones and trying to find peace with that very powerful present ever moving cycle of you know things falling away things coming through death and rebirth it's something that we all move through in many many different ways as we journey through this life and the end of October is a really wonderful time to acknowledge that and then we have the beautiful rising of the Pleiades which is an inspiration for that as well all right so that is your monthly forecast for October please stay tuned by visiting foreverconscious.com. I have so many articles on there about all the upcoming uh, cosmic events uh, happening through the month of October. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Join me over on Instagram. It's at foreverconscious, uh, where I share daily cosmic updates and also my newsletter, which I send out weekly, helping you to keep ahead of all of the beautiful cosmic energies that we get to explore. You can sign up for the newsletter on the website. There's a sign up box under every article on the site. Uh, so check that out. And I am Tanaz from foreverconscious.com. I will be seeing you next month in November. Thank you.